Hey guys, Daryl from Playcasters here, and today I'm going to run you through some of the good points and the bad points with Operation Bravo. Um, the actual update itself is is really good, really good on a whole. Uh, there are a few bad things, but I'll go over those soon. So first of all, the new maps have been added to matchmaking. Now this is a big thing because in the previous Operation Payback, they were just simply in casual mode, and I think they were in deathmatch. I'm not 100% on that, um, but with them being added to matchmaking, it means it widens the sort of competitive pool as such. Um, whether or not leagues will pick these maps up as well. I mean, the majority of the maps still have a few sort of like uh, visual errors, like the amount of distance and the colours. Uh, so for people who have trouble differentiating colours, such as myself and my red green colour blindness, um, it's sometimes a little bit hard to see the players. But other than that, they are a few good maps, especially D Alley. I, I really enjoyed that the couple of times I've managed to play on matchmaking. Um, the bad thing to that is that Valve still use their 64 tick servers. Now I know the majority of players don't actually have decent systems that can take full advantage of 128 tick servers. But for those that are actually playing matchmaking, it's it's kind of needed for us to have better registration and for a server that actually feels responsive and that the hits register. Um, so let's move on to the next thing, the weapons. Obviously, it's making more money. It's making more money for Valve. It's making more money for CS:GO on a whole, which could mean bigger prize pools. I know it's not the esports case, so the money isn't going directly into prize tournaments. Um, I do find it a bit weird how even the free players. Uh, like the people who haven't bought Bravo can still get the Bravo cases. Um, we still have to open the cases with keys, which to me is another way of getting even more money out of us who might be addicted to it. Um, another nice thing is that they've made the crafting applicable to all collections now, not just the arms deal collection. So this means if you have 10 guns from the office collection or 10 guns from the esports, the militia, whatever. You can use 10 from each collection. You can't mix and match the collections, but it is a nice way to do it, say, if you've got like a million gazillion uh, Doom keys sat around. Um, another nice thing about Operation Payback is the fact there's the scorecard. And with this scorecard, you can check like how many round kills, like you've got three man, four man, five man, um, how long you've been playing it. And that's a really nice feature because it doesn't just work on the Bravo maps, it's actually on the whole sort of competitive matchmaking thing. So you can be playing Dust 2 and it'll still count towards that. Um, I think a few people haven't actually noticed that. Um, so another few bad things is that there's still the sort of smoke bug where you can sort of see through the smokes. Um, there's a few sort of other things like they're still not updated the deagle this long and the deagle is still just no point there. You might as well just take off the menu. Um, I know that's a little bit weird, but you would have thought after this long they might have provided a sort of update to sort of balance it out a bit. I know there was talks of a revolver, and I saw the little icons for that way back. So I'm pretty sure that will come into play at some point. Thank you for listening to me ramble for a little while. 